What is up, everybody? Welcome to a special live stream. I got on my hands the Yesu FT710. Just about to be released for everybody that has those pre-orders in. You're about to see them start shipping soon. And oh, buddy, we're going to take a look at it and play some radio. All right, first look time. First look. That's right. Capital first look. All right, guys, we'll make it quick. We'll dive right into this. I know you got things to do and you want to see the radio, not my dumb face. But we're looking at the FT710, the new Yesu radio. It was announced a couple of months back. This is the basically the first time I saw it was last night. And uh, I'll give you spoiler alerts. It's about the size of the Yesu 991 from a dimension standpoint. I picked this up at HRO. They're having a sale right now, um, their fall sale, which we'll talk about in a second. But you can still buy the FT710, which they are shipping. Right now, they don't have a stock. I am told that their special event that they're having at Milwaukee may have them on site for that special event. So if you are at all interested and you are in that area and you want one of these, you may want to head over there. Big shout out, though, to HRO for letting me borrow this radio. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, and I'm really excited to talk about it. With that said, <laughs> their HRO Superfest savings that they have going on right now puts the FTDX10 at the same price as the uh, FT710. And you probably already watched my review of the FTDX10. I really like that radio, too. It's a really good radio. So, hey, man, you might want <laughs> to consider what's going on. If you got the scratch at 1300 may want to pop on that FTDX10. Not saying anything against bad about the 710. Just saying the, the FTDX10 is a, it's a good uh is definitely a good a good radio. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. Here it is in all its glory. Uh let's bring me in there. All right. So again, same size as the 991, right? And that AES speaker is on top and we're definitely going to talk about that right up in front because that is uh that was a bit of a surprise for me when I was playing around with this making contacts last night. So let's let's spin it around a little bit. On the side here is the SD card. You can see the slot for it right there. These are actually the mounting screws for the 710. These this speaker literally just kind of slides in and you will see that there are little rubber grommets on both sides of the the speaker so you can switch those. It will mount on the left side or the right side of the radio. Around back we do have that display port that people were interested in, as well as the four pin power port. There is a USB-A next to a USB-B. So USB-A is going to be your accessory USB port. USB-B is going to be like your printer connection, or not a printer connection, a um, connection to a computer. Like this becomes the device the computer connects to. Your data connector is there if you're going to use something like an SCU-17, which I believe will connect right up. Key, your... Um, ALC or remote capability for keying an amp. External speaker, this is where the AESS device, that SP40 speaker that you can see above, that's where that connects into the radio. So you use that port and that's what allows you to push to the speaker. And then you have your tuner linear connection and there is your antenna connection. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and take my little Bluetooth mouse here and I'm gonna plug it into that uh, USB port right now so that you can I can show you how it works with a mouse pretty well. I was using that last night as well. Okay, we're plugged in there. For everybody that uh, is new to HF radios or is new to ham radios in general or is looking to get a beginner radio, what I'm basically going to do at this point is I'm going to connect the antenna to the antenna port. We're going to do some live audio tests for receive, and uh, we're going to play around with some of the settings on the radio. And of course, we got to give it power. But because this has an external display, I get to pass all the screenly goodness onto you, hopefully if this all works, uh, via a DVI cable, which I have right here that I have connected to my stream. So we're going to feed that in as well. All right, let me go ahead and plug this all in and we'll get it right on the air.
All right, I have not uh, connected the speaker yet. I'm gonna give you some audio out on the stock speaker. Then we're gonna connect the AES and I'm gonna show you how, there's actually a, a bit of radio control on how the AESS, -E I keep dropping that second S, I apologize, functions. By the way, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. If you'd like to send a question uh, more specifically about the radio, let me know. And I've got a little mic here that we're going to move this around because if I don't move it around, the AESS is going to be kind of complicated to explain. So bear with me. I do have the 3D waterfall turned on. Here's a bit of the background audio for the radio. Tell me if you're hearing that okay. And you may have noticed that little mouse cursor. See that? There's your mouse cursor for the radios right there. Right, so I can do some things like change. We'll get into it in a little bit, but I've got some control there as well with the uh, with the mouse. It's kind of tiny though. I haven't figured out how to make that bigger and I don't know that you can, but it's certainly there. But you can see the uh, 3D waterfall there is, uh, not everybody likes the 3D waterfall. I'll show you the quick uh, the quick and handy on how the 3D waterfall is, is best suited for you. Basically, most of the controls of the radio are gonna be found under the function button, which is right here. And for those of you that have an FTDX10 or FT101, or have used them, this is gonna be familiar to you. Push the function in, and there you will see the main controls for the radio. Now, something to note right off the, the bat here is if you click on level, that sets the function dial to the level uh, setting for the radio. And you can tell that that's the setting that's selected because it says it right there in the, in the corner. But now if I turn that, that's actually controlling the visual gain that you see on the screen here. And for those that are just tuning in, we're looking at the Yaesu FT710, a all HF band and six meter radio. So if I scroll that, you'll see that all those little blades of grass start to pop up. We're adding to the noise floor. Let's dial that back until it's just peeking. That's the way you want that 3D waterfall to look. So let's let's dive over and find a signal, and then I'll show you how that AESS speaker functions and what the controls look like. You are listening to the stock speaker. Engineer for the uh, programming uh, language uh, of all the software for the F-15. So he'd been there during Boeing uh, preparing. And this is a, an S9 signal, so a really strong signal. So, uh, and I have the microphone. So, uh, he's, uh, he's this microphone, that, literally anyway, magneted, retired, magneted <laughs> on top of the radio years, near the stock speaker. The stock speaker is right here. Let's attach the AESS and we'll plug in the external speaker and I'll try and give you a better idea of the sound quality. So it's keyed on the sides here. I have to shift things a little bit with my lazy Susan. All right, the AES the AESS is now attached and connected. 
a little bit for having that. You know, I detect all now, what makes this kind of interesting good. is this actually really uses good. the two speakers in phase with each other. You can balance between the forward-facing speaker, the one you're looking at here, and the top-facing speaker. I'm going to do my best to demonstrate the audio change, but this is really something you need to do if you're in your own home because it's going to vary based off of your acoustics in your room, but I'll show you how it functions. Click the function button. Down in the lower right-hand corner, down in the lower right hand corner you'll find an AESS button and an AESSCF button. If you click this one, it's generally recommended that you leave it on 700 for balanced audio or 1000 hertz if you're planning to have it cranked really high volume, listen loudly. So let's go back. I set it to 1000 hertz. We'll try it both ways. And then the second one is this AES balance point. So 50% is, is split between the top speaker, the top firing speaker, and the forwards facing speaker. For you in internet land, I'm using a DJI lavalier mic. And uh, of course, I'm going to have to move this around as we listen so you kind of get you know a little spatial pr uh, presentation. This is max volume. A, uh, what is it, a zero 05 uh, vertical antenna. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be uh, free of radials, but uh, it was made to mount to five to, uh, excuse me, six to nine feet off the ground. It's and quite here good. I've got it mounted, uh, I'll have it mounted on top of the shed, which is about 15 feet above the ground. So uh, I had to compensate by running four guide, uh, four ground wires uh, from the, from the uh, mast all the way uh, to each corner of the shed. I have a, a, an eight-foot copper rod uh, pounded into the ground in each corner of the, of the, uh, of the shed. Uh, Let's balance it for the, 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 the AES, all forward-firing speaker. my ground plane, uh, providing the, the, what would be considered to be uh, a nice radial reflection. For the this is all forward-facing speaker. Probably well know. Verticals without radials yeah. are... Uh, they just don't sing very well, and they don't even hear very well. So I'm hoping that'll compensate for it. And, and I can handle a 23-pound uh, vertical antenna. As God, I'm really to, glad uh, I found this rag to, uh, shoe already uh, in session. 65-pound uh, <laughs> rotor and, uh, and hex beam. And uh, I don't have to ask my neighbors for a whole bunch of help here and there. And the hex beams are really nice. Don't get me wrong. They okay. So there's there's balancing between the two. That's that's struck right in the middle for balancing. I will note that it's generally uh, pretty bassy, or it, it adds a bassy character. Obviously, human voice is not too bassy, but when you add the AESS speaker, which you don't have to, right? If you wanted to take this portable or whatever, you don't have to. My assumption is is that. It's a decent speaker that's inside the AESS, but really it's that resonance chamber that is the body of the speaker that is giving you that fuller sound. Um, and to be honest, you know, it sounds good. It sounds good. Now, this radio comes with the AESS speaker, so just keep that in mind. Um, that is a part of what you're buying when you're buying this. But as far as a radio and control, again, to remind everybody, it's, it's very much like the FTDX10. So let's uh, let's poke around a little bit on the screen and the front controls. All right. If you are familiar with the FTDX10, you you've probably already noted that there is quite a difference in the front controls on the radio. Up top, which you may have a difficulty seeing, is where you change things like the mode that you're operating on. You have a Zin spot key, a split if you want to run into split mode, clarifier, and noise blanker. There we go. Back to regular. Had the clarifier turned on. That's why the lights changed. Now, there were more buttons on the FT4DX around the bezel of the VFO. Now it's just these kind of cool little lights, which look good. Uh, generally, the controls are what you kind of expect for a pretty straightforward beginner radio, though. Um, you have your AF gain and squelch control right here, and it, that is what actually drops the RF gain on the receiver, which is different from what I showed you on the 3D waterfall. So watch that. We'll drop it down, and sure enough, you'll see the signals. Yesu does things a little bit backwards. Their RF gain is actually this red line will go up 
to imply muting. There you go. So that's with the RF gain turned all the way up. We've basically deafened the radio. There's the opposite way. Now, the AF gain is obviously your volume control. There was a comment that I saw, and, and by the way, link is in the description to the really good video that they that Julian did for Ham Radio Outlet if you'd like to see some dimensions of the radio. But I'll just remind everybody, if you have any concept of what the 991 is size-wise, the uh, 710 is basically the same size. There was a comment, though, that uh, I got asked on my Twitter post, Instagram post, and also it was mentioned on the uh, HRO video about... Uh, knob wobble so with this camera facing we got a nice little shot on the the knobs here let me get out of the way a little bit here is the knob wobble there is some play these feel like caps that are sitting on controls and they all have a bit of wobble so there's a bit of play there uh, is the waterfall any different from the FTDX10? My understanding is that the screen is bigger on the FTDX10. So it looks like the same software from a waterfall standpoint, but relatively the same from just the way it looks and the controls. All right. Now, as far as the screen goes, let's see if we got that video going. We do. So here is what it would look like if it was output to a monitor. And I'll go into that function button again. And I'll go back up to level in the upper left-hand corner. And we'll dial back the blades of grass a little bit. And this is only attenuating the screen, if you will. Right? So that's what this looks like if you piped it into a monitor. There are two, uh, there are two resolution settings, 800 by 480 and 800 by 600. I am using an audio capture card or video capture card. And I was only able to make it work. Am I there? Where am I? Oh, I'm way in the back. <laughs> I'll hide myself for now. I was only able to make this work with 800 by 480. So keep that in mind. You might get a change in resolution depending on the monitor you're using. We'll go into the menu zone in a second. And we'll use that to do it. But it seems to work pretty well. All right. Uh, so far, my favorite knob. You know, I'm a fan of a good knob. All my, all my UK watchers. I like this uh, lower left-hand button right here. The, the step slash mch button and let's see if i can change the there we go there we go come on so that's where you're going to find things like the shift your width for bandwidth your notch and your contour function if you remember on my uh, ftdx 10 video i quite liked the contour feature let's see if we can find Someone with a bit of noise in the background. Looks like we're only hearing one side of the conversation. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about uh, uh, Al? You got a copy, or was that you that just said that you couldn't, or is it Neil? Now, pay attention to the the actual bandwidth readout here for voice. I'll select notch, and we'll turn it on. And from here, with it flashing, I can adjust the notch point. You see that pipe, that slice, almost like an axe blade coming down on the over the bandwidth right here. That's how you control the notch. That's to notch out like a birdie or some kind of low bandwidth tone. But what I like is the contour. So the contour is a softer curve. You see, it's like a little egg. 
And that's kind of just to, to knock something down. That's just kind of a little bit of interference that may be isolated to a certain part of the, the bandwidth of where you're having a conversation, which is pretty nice. I, I, I still like that contour function. Bandwidth controls, you can change that as, as you like. Let's up that a little bit. We'll make it 3,000 to start here. Yeah, we'll switch over to the HRCC net here shortly so you can get an idea of what it sounds like with some of the folks we have on the net in a more difficult band for me to hear. 20 meters is, is my good band, probably one of my best bands. 40 meters, though, not the best, so we'll go into a contested environment to, to listen a bit. I guess you could say the HRCC uh, FT8 net is every Saturday during the after chat. Yeah, everybody wants to see the 2D waterfall? Absolutely. I know for a fact them radio waves is harmful. Nathan, thank you so much. And I, I lost the pop-up there, but I appreciate that as an appreciation for all you do. Thanks for the best. Kate MRD is on 20 meter FT8. Right on. <laughs> Here's the 2D waterfall for those of you that prefer the 2D world. I have it set for pretty fast right now. Okay, uh, I'm, I believe you said a 5-5 also. We'll just see the 5-5 both ways. Here's the front of the AESS speaker. Okay, uh, this is Kilo November 4, Charlie Oscar Echo. Uh, I'm going to make his last call sound like 20 is about dead on us. This is KN4COE, last call. Oof. Is there anyone else that uh, want to contact KN4COE before I shut her down? Okay, uh, this is Kilo November 4, Charlie Oster Echo. I will now go QRT. Thank you, everyone, for the contacts. When we switch over to 40 meters, I'll make sure. When we switch over to 40 meters for the net, I'll make sure that uh, I get an SDR going so that we can try and hear the transmit audio on myself as I'm calling to join the net. <laughs> yeah. Best way to consider it is it's the same size as the 991. That that's really the way I um I, I visualize it best. I didn't go over completely all the front buttons, but uh, this is your memory right and VFO control. Uh, this is your VFO. This is your memory right. Your A and B select for you know you've got two different channels you can work off of. Your band select and a Q on B. Where is it right here? No. Nope. We don't have anything set up, so it's not going to be able to switch. Uh, and now DNR is the last thing we're going to play around with. We'll end up using that horrible. more on um, the, the net, so stay tuned for that. The, um, the net, we're going to end up using the DNR probably a lot, but basically that's the digital noise reduction.
We'll play around with it a little bit before we go over there. All right, you can see I've got the noise blanker and DNR turned on. This is controllable by holding the button down. I found that if you go anywhere really before, at, like up to six, it starts to sound like you're underwater. But at three, it sounds pretty good. And we are, we have the microphone pointed at the front facing the AESS speaker that's just above my head. Question in the chat, what wireless mouse am I using? This is a Razer Aruchi. And this is a pretty sweet mouse. I, I know I'm reviewing a radio right now, but uh, it'll actually take one AA or one AAA. It does Bluetooth and it also has a little dongle that it stores inside. Fantastic mouse. It's a portable gaming mouse, but it's small and light. He's it back. Uh, yeah, I, so for everybody asking about size, again, if you think the 991 is a portable radio, then you would consider this a portable radio. It, it's a little on the big side, but could you put it in a Go box? Absolutely. Why not? Uh, James, question. Yes, I did. I did open the manual. In fact... Much like all, much like all Yesu radios, the the manual is, you know, well appointed. It's a thick boy, and has lots of actual images on what you do uh, with the radio. I found that I, I had the same experience with the FTDX10 and 101. By the way, all the majors, ICOM of course has good good manuals, and there's a map. Everybody loves maps. The map is back with the uh, FT FT4 had a uh, had a map. No deep F menu. Now I will. I'll show you the deepest menu again. We're gonna hop into that uh, that net here soon. So let's let's reposition the camera a little bit to get rid of that glare. And I'm gonna slide over here so I can get in front of it a little bit better to show you. We're gonna go into the the more of the back end controls. This is what you will need to play with if you want to do digital modes. All right. So if you hit the function button, that brings up the big menu. All the bottom options here these are kind of like your your deeper menus this is the double click type stuff so if i go to radio settings it's broken up into different tabs so single sideband am fm psk data so if i go to psk data for instance that's where you'll see things like your mod gain your out your narrow width psk tone all the different things that you'd have to change if you wanted to do different digital modes let's go to the top here so you can see working through here, there's a couple of places you have to go though. So much like Yesu, you gotta jump around a little bit for some of this. It's not just all one-stop shopping. I can change the source. Mod source currently is USB. That is not stock. Uh, mod source is stock is uh, rear, I believe. No, where is it? Come on. There it is. Rear was what I believe was stock. Doesn't matter. If you're gonna use that USB port, you gotta have it in USB. We'll talk about digital modes in a, in a little bit. I was hoping to share that with you, but um, not working right now with WSJTX at least. Because WSJTX doesn't have a configuration for the 710 yet, it is very likely that you can't just use the FTDX10, although it does everything. Cat control, I can move frequencies, I can change bands, but I can't PTT on Windows yet. I was able to get a little bit further with uh, Raspberry Pi, but uh, we'll talk about that as we go here. All right, so you can dive into this more if you want to, but this is where you're going to change things like your parametric receive capability, or sorry, parametric transmit and radio settings for receive. Next is CW settings. This is where you change your mode for CW, the functionality. And here is where you're going to set things like if you are running a iambic mode A, mode B, uh, your weight. 
Let's go down. You can load memory here for your CW contacts if you want to do that. And this is where I had to go under general to find out what the cat rate was. Not exactly um, the same as the first menu. So just keep that in mind. You will have to go to general to figure out what the cat rate is. But once you have that, you're, you're good to go. Okay. Oop. Your notch control for changing. Now, here's the transmit audio. This is where you set that parametric uh, transmit. Different than the receive side, which was that other option screen. This is kind of the, the deepest menus that you'll have to go to with this radio. Now, the only, the only complaint I noted and uh, I will tell you about is these menus uh, right down here, kind of hard to click with your finger. You actually kind of have to aim, kind of have to aim above, just above radio and almost into message there to like, Get it. See, I'm aiming too low. I'm pushing the screen right now. It's not doing anything. But if I aim up a little bit, it goes right in. So just keep that in mind. I, I think that's just the way that the screen's hitbox is set up. Uh, display settings is probably something that some people are going to be interested in. So if you go to external monitor here, uh, this is your two options, on and then the actual resolution. And again, 800 by 480 and 800 by 600. There you go. Back. All right. Now, I just tried this, and here's my mouse. I'm clicking, but it's not going in. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, maybe that's more for Riddy. Let's go back. All right, I think it's time. We can probably start hopping over. <laughs> Jamscan. I love you too, but I love Mike more, Jamscan, than you love Mike. All right, let's go over to the HF net and find out where everybody's at. They're usually on 7190 or 71210. Not 7.200. Okay, looks like Don's running it. Okay, let's flip things over here. I'm going to move over to 40 meters. Ah, great question. This radio does not do CW decoding. At least I haven't figured out how to do it. The FTDX10 does. Could not could not do it on this one. But uh, we'll we'll get done with the uh, HF net. I'll let you hear the HF net, and then we'll hop over back into CW because I know you want to see that. I apologize that I can't do digital modes. As a hail mary, I'll try to connect via the Raspberry Pi at the end of the stream. But I'll save that for the end. I'm going to save all my crazy hail mary stuff uh, for the last half of the of the video here. Uh, yeah, uh, you're saying it in a way that I probably would, that's a little hypercritical, but you can see it. This is actually what it looks like. I have it piped into my, uh, my Elgato capture cards and it's a little, it's a little thick boy on that one. So we'll, we'll, we'll just move along with that. All right. We're on 40 now. We're going to switch bands. I'll show you how to do that right here. Band button. Go to seven. Hey, look at all them signals that just popped up. And we are going to be on. So everybody that's paying attention at home, if you'd like to hop into an SDR or get your radio actually tuned up, we are going to be on 7.221. And I'm just futzing with this because I'm trying to stay out of the view. So sorry, I'm VFOing like a, a noob here. All right. I do have DNR turned on. Uh, that will not be part of the uh, of today's festivities, Jody. I will say though, for everybody who did watch my S Bit X video, the finals have arrived from DigiKey, along with the thermal paste, and I already have some sockets that I'm going to cut.
Now, I, I will mention my capture card and the live stream. The live stream that you're watching right now is in 1080. I can't live stream 4K. That's that's just too much power for for my meek setup to handle. But yeah, it, in 1080, it does make it a little bit a little bit much. I would say. So that is the voice of Evan. We will be using the stock microphone. They just started the net. The the buttons do not line up. Do not light up. Looks like there's a lot of noise on the net today. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit for the sake of all your ears, and then I'll, if I hear an opening, I'll jump in there. Uh, good question. Yes, you can man uh, navigate via the function. So that's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Oh, you know what will help? I should just go ahead and preemptively bump this old bad boy all the way up. Well, let's see. There is set to fastest. Uh, AGC should be slow. That's where I left it. Unless uh, on my playing around with digital, we, we ran into problems with it. So let, let's get that sorted out. Good Good call on that. That'll help us out a little bit, but auto's pretty good on this. Yeah, price was mentioned, but I don't mind going back. The price right now at HRO, link is in the description, is $1299.95. Uh, it's because it's a brand new radio, guys, and, and, I'll, and I can talk a little bit more about that as we get closer. I expect the price to come down, specifically for the holiday season. I'll just give you my thoughts while I'm waiting for the net to kind of warm up. I expect that the price will go down uh, and there will probably be a coupon associated with that for the holiday season to kind of, you know, encourage people to pick it up. So just keep that in mind. With that said, uh, if, if you've got money burning a hole in your pocket, HRO does have their sub super fest going on at the Milwaukee store and they have an FTDX 10. They're selling FTDX 10s for the same price. And the FTTX, FTDX 10, if you were to ask me which one I would buy right now at the same price, it would be the FTDX 10. It's bigger. It has a bigger screen. Uh, you got that discrete RF front end for the roofing filters. It's a lot of radio that, that you get for that price. So my bet is, uh, is to go with that now. Now, if you ask me what would I ask for for Christmas, that's a different question. Um, you know, this is highly subjective, Jeff. Uh, I know you're a Yesu guy, Jeff. Th this is a really subjective question on what the ergonomics are like. So far, you know, looking at the controls, it's very simple. It's a very simple control face. And the controls that you would use most likely are all kind of like single button clicks. 
The ones that are buried uh, under this knob here is things like your bandwidth, your notch, and your contour. The bandwidth being buried is the only one that you may access more than others, but by and large, it's a simplistic radio, right? It's a, it's a new user type radio, and for the new user type settings that, that may not go in and tweak a bunch of stuff, it, I would say it's pretty ergonomic. All right, let's go back to the net here. That is Evan you're hearing. Roger, Roger. This is there we go. Waiting for that relay. For radio Let's dive in. On, uh, Hopefully you're listening. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. Uh, Whiskey 4, Bravo, got you an uh, Alpha, Zulu again. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. QSL? Oh, thank you very much. I'm on the Yesu FT710. Well, it's sounding good. Uh, anybody else check in, check All right. in for the HRCC? We'll, we'll see if they come back around. Uh, and now would be the time to see if I can get that SDR set up. So we're going to pick up a web SDR, see if we can hear ourselves. Uh, I know I can generally hit Utah pretty well. That seems like a, a, a bit of a sandbag, but I'd like to hear the, the, a large strength signal. So we'll see. Okay, kind of had a pile up there. Uh, go again. Okay, we're going to mute that. Hey, TC Fitz! <laughs> Does it come with the O bulb? Also, did you AEE -E the I Morse? Uh, we have not done Morse code yet. We'll, we'll play around with Morse code a little bit. Maybe I, I misunderstood. Feel free to, to, if you have a clarification on that, AES Morse? Is that AESS? -S? Is that what you meant? We'll play around with that. And thank you again for the super chat. It means a lot. Boy, this guy's having a hard time getting through. Cheers. Uh, All right, so hopefully everybody's listening or you'll pull up uh, an SDR. I'll try and play my audio once they throw to me. We'll see. Try and do a live test. Oh, yeah, TC Fitz. I, I did see that. I think I bought one. Oh, hey, thank you so much. I, I am using a really nice camera to film this. I'm not using a, a dinky webcam. I can switch it over to dinky webcam if you'd like. Here, here we go. This is what dinky webcam looks like. Oh, the quality. Oh, the majesty. That is the speaker, though, right there. Oh, yeah, look at look at the quality. The flickering lights, all that. Oof, buddy. We'll stick to this, I think. <laughs> Can the meter be displayed differently, as in bar style? Yeah, yeah, that is a setting I believe you can change, but uh, we can we can look into that. Some of the settings might be a little bit more uh, lifestyle settings that you might want to figure out as you get more used to the radio, as if you buy one yourself. Uh, the, the speaker is a pack-in. It comes with the radio. You can't get it without it. Now, I kind of need it running in the background just so I can hear it if they call me. I, I don't feel that the speaker is, like, that expensive. Like, if they were to sell it, I don't know how, like, much it would be. I can't assume that. Whatever the parts are, it's well made. It's it's actually it's actually really nice. Christiana, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a well made. It sounds good. I think it's by and large the quality of the box that they put that in. They get that 
cavernous box on the back end of that thing that's really, I think, helping the sound quality out. Assuming that the pinout is identical, yes, the speaker will work because it's just a passive speaker. It's not a powered speaker. As long as your tip ring sleeve setup is the same, it should be fine. Same, same should work just fine. That relay is really moving. I'm gonna get in there and see if we can. Oh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. It's entirely possible, yes. It's entirely possible that this sounds better than the DX10. And I I totally appreciate this is subjective because I'm sitting in front of it. I have have it tuned around a little bit for the room that we're in. It sounds really good in person with that little speaker. That This is also really an argument for why you should attach an external speaker or use headphones on radios because it always makes them sound so much better. Stock speakers are not great. Just keep that in mind as always. Always try to improve your audio. Okay, with a kilo, kilo four, Charlie Hotel Papa. Okay, now, uh, else, above my head, right here, right where the speaker connects, it's really solid. Let me let me get my head out of the way here. It's it doesn't really wobble. There's some rubber grommets that hold it tight. I am on a step IR right now. For everybody asking me, what am I doing? What am I just sitting here? I'm waiting for the net to come back to me, and we're going to try and listen to it on the web SDR. And so anybody on frequency 7.221 will be able to hear me. Uh, good question. Can I do speaker and headphones at the same time? Let's try. No. At least I don't know yet. You might be able to split. We might be able to split it. Again, those might be a deep dive in the menu settings. That's the stock, right? It, there's probably a setting to where you can say use headphones and speakers. Most radios do that, so we'll, we'll check. Uh, it is. It feels the same denseness balance of the 991. It, it is it, it is identical. It's got the same footprint as the 991. Good good radio though. Oh, that's that's an interesting concept. Thinking of a radio in the classroom. Uh, this could work because it 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 you get the speaker and it it's loud. It's really loud. It's got Sony guts. KMRD, Sony Guts. Sony Guts. Let me in! Just let me hop in really quick on the net, guys. Let me dive in and go back to check-ins. <laughs> oh, okay, so... But by the way, anything that, like, the FT4D... The FT, FTDX10 does that the... If, if, it, if the FTTX... Jeez, oh, I'm getting tongue-tied. If the FT DX10 doesn't do it, then likely the 710 is not going to do it. Why would they give you more features on a cheaper radio, right? If you think about it. Because they're not that far apart on their release dates. He keeps going back. I need to hop in. <laughs> Don't go, Relay. All right, I'm going to call out right now. I'm going to mute myself. Kilo India 6, November, Alpha Zulu. We're testing the uh, FT710 Live. 
So everybody on the stream, you're hearing the audio off of the web SDR and we talk. You can watch me over on YouTube. We're testing this out live. So far, really good sounding radio, at least from the audio received, and we're testing the transmit audio. So you guys all tell me how I'm coming out. Okay, John, thank you so much for checking in with us tonight. Uh, yeah, you're playing really good here. Uh, the new radio is uh, working out nicely. Looking forward to watching the stream back later. Um, this is the KJR for the Hill Radio Craft Point Net. Uh, it's at the Yankee. I will throw it back to you if you still had a pile up. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's see how many more we can check in here. This is Whiskey 7 Echo Yankee, relay for net control of the 8... All right, so that's the single sideband sounds. We're almost done with the stream, but that's okay. We'll keep going. Took us a little while to get through to the uh, to the net there to do an audio test, but hopefully you heard that on the SDR. Sounds good, and I am transmitting on 70 centimeters on a dipole. Sorry, 40 meters, 7 megahertz on a dipole to a Utah SDR. We could have, probably could have stretched it out a little bit further, but, you know, no big deal. All right, let's flip it over to CW and maybe poke around the menus with some questions. I don't really have a hard out on this live stream, so keep the questions coming because so far they've been really good. So thanks, everybody, for bearing with me. All right, mode button is on the top here. Click that. We'll move it into CW. I don't really have a preference, upper or lower, um, but let's uh, let's actually go back to 20 meters and see if there's some CW activity because generally 20 meters is my better band, and in Cali, we're good on 20 to like 11 p.m. So you'll start to see that RF die off because the antenna is literally adjusting itself. The step IR is adjusting itself. Let's change band. And we'll start to see the signals come up, hopefully, as we as we go through this. Um, so any anything that like is kind of a weird look to you on the screen is is more likely just how I have things set up and the lighting I'm using. I'm trying to to balance it out to where you can still see everything, like the physical controls and the on screen controls for the screen. It can be a little bit difficult, so I'm I'm trying to work my best, but. Everything on the screen is adjustable for brightness. In fact, I just have the brightness turned way down. Let me show you what it looks like when you when you amp it up. Right, so there's there's plenty of brightness. There's there's lots of brightness in there. I just have it turned down for video more than anything. So we'll leave it at one. That, that'll give you some to work on. All right, let's slide way down here. Get out of uh, of Dodge. Oh, you know what? We can use this guy too, right? Where is it? Nope, this one. Nope, this one. One of these. There it is. Oh, too far. This is the fast scan. Come on. Come on. Come on now, bud. There we go. Are them CW signals? Sounds like somebody's working a bug. Is that like a bug? Let's play around with the CW a little bit here. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Leave that at fix. There we go.
Come on. There we go. These are all settings that you really need to go in there and, uh, yeah, you can get the zero beat right off of there. For the comment there. That's the zero beat right there. You can see that vertical, that peak under P. Um, Jesse, that's really not the screen's fault. It's more the position I put myself in. I'm way off to the right-hand side of the radio, and I'm using this little stylus to touch it. The only thing that I found fiddy, fiddly, the bottom controls are all easy. It's these controls with my finger were kind of a pain to use. I was looking for harmful. tone settings. Here we go. Pitch is what I was looking for. So pitch control is important depending on your, your ears and all that fun stuff. What you prefer. <laughs> yeah, indeed, Seahorn. I'm not trying to do CW right now. I'm more or less just demonstrating it. How fast is Fast 3? Let's try. There you go. There's Fast 3. Oh my god, hang on, Tony! Oh, CW is so fast now. <laughs> All right, let's go with some questions. I think we covered a lot of the major stuff, the big stuff. Oh, you know what? While while we're doing that, I'll I'll take questions while we're playing around here. Let me let me slow this down. See if we can get that VNC connection working. Uh, let's see. Hammer into Crash Course. Is this the secret product you had to fix the toroid on at Gigaparts? Or is that... Oh, no, that's already done. That was the that was the Shegu 106. That's that, I already did that. X106, I did a couple of videos on that. Fast 3 is straight to plat. <laughs> right. So, uh, for funsies, if you click function, right? Click function, you can go up to color here. And these are all the colors that you have. Um, I, I, I actually like the white one, and I'll show you why. It gives me, like, strong alien vibes. My Raspberry Pi, Pi is proper doinked on this, so we're probably not going to be able to get into it. Ooh, too far. Too much enhancement. Can you get the same scope options as the FTDX10? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the the same layout that you see above my head is the same layout that you would get on the FTDX10. The orange is traditional Yesu orange. How dare you? That's the that's their that's the way. <laughs> Wait, right, was that ready? Or was that something else? Oh, we gotta put this in a ready. Wait, is that ready? Okay. Come on. Where is it? Where's 
Low button. Why am I? There it is. Come on. Ah. Uh, we need to, we need to expand. Oh man, I lucked out on this one. Let's go. I really like the white. Come to Papa here. Here we go. I am not the best riddier. All right, now we need to figure out how to get this thing into the decode. I found this on the web. No, you didn't. It should have a ready, ready decoder. Right? I didn't expect to find ready. <laughs> to be honest with you. So the fact that we ran into this, we, we should take advantage of this while we can. So somebody help me out. How do you decode RIDI on the FTDX10? Uh, CW settings. I'm literally doing this for the first time. Now we have gone way off script. We're off the hour, so. Oh, worldwide Riddy? Let's go. We're just going to stay up for 24 hours. I'm going to worldwide Riddy on this uh, this thing. Right on this bad boy. I'm going to find a keyboard. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> How does one do the decode? All right. So this is where... <laughs> Press function touch decode. Really? Really? It's that easy? Function. Am I missing it? Look at the bottom blue menus. I see it. Oh, only the uh, FTDX10 does it. Are you serious? I saw it, dude. Well, that's going to change my opinion somewhat. Okay, 56. 58. Okay. We are in Riddy L sixty five. No, that's not it. I don't think it decodes Riddy. I don't think it does. Let's go with this beast here. <laughs> I don't care, Mike. I don't care. I 
so I, I know there are some people that, that want to use um, a keyboard and mouse with this. Like, I, I've heard, heard people mention that, but, you know, here's here's my mouse. Where's my mouse? That that is a mouse. That is a little tiny cursor on the little tiny screen there. I'm not upset that it doesn't do ready decode. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Because I think we've hit the hour and. I tried to do digital. I it it'll work eventually. I'm positive of that. I think there's just a subtle difference in um in the configuration for the FTDX10 on WSJTX. No outer ring on the VFO. That's FTDX10 territory. Does a scroll wheel act as a VFO? No, it, it doesn't. I don't know what's going on with the mouse. I may have to plug an actual, like, wired mouse into this because the mouse isn't doing much other than being a mouse on the screen right now. Um, I I could be persuaded to hang out for an after chat for a little while for people that want to hang out, but it, it won't be live to YouTube. We'll just wrap this one up because I think I'm pretty much done here. Still curious about the presets in modes. All right, here's your presets. There you go. <laughs> what do you? Oh, preset. I see what you said. I think you may have to define them. Maybe you can save one. Uh, can I buy it tomorrow? You can buy it right now. It just depends on when you get it. Depends on where you're at, who has them, and when they can ship it to you. Yeah, I'm on ready. Right. <laughs> Thank you, plasma fart. Thank you. I'm in Richie mode. I don't understand how to decode. Hold the preset button. All right, let's do that. Thrilling. Did nothing. There we go. Got it. So first preset is FT8. And let's see what the next one is. I think it's just called preset. Oh, so they're just, you can go in and set them to whatever you want. Well, you guys have been watching this this whole time. I have been touching it, and the fingerprints are pretty minimal. See if we can line this up a little bit better. I don't even know what that is. Are you going to review the new HamPi software for the Jankopotamus reviewed at the QSO today? HamPi, the pre-built image? Probably not. I'm not going to change my window, my cheap Windows laptop over to Linux. I'll just use a Raspberry Pi if I need Linux. Or I'll use my Steam Deck. Uh, another good question there. If you press the 14, do you, can you change the frequency to a different band, or do you have to hit the band button? Let's try. It makes it flash. Indeed. I think you're right. Uh, believe me, I attempted it for this video. I attempted to get the Steam Deck to connect to this, but the Steam Deck has some audio issues that I need to get sorted out, and I, I believe it's a software problem. Push 14 and turn knob. Sure, why not? Yeah. There you go. It works.
Um, well, let's let's dive into that. Uh, that's a uh, we'll 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 end with this. So Andre asks, um, I still can't figure out why to buy this over a seventy three hundred other than if you're a Yesu fanboy. Um, so this is where I'll go back to what I've been saying for a while now. If you have the capability to put hands on a radio in like a store situation, you should. You should go try out these radios, experience them for yourself, decide what what you like. I know that this video is going to get a ton of questions on like this or the 7300 or this or the whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, everybody keep in mind the 7300 is, is kind of older now, right? It's like five years old. That doesn't make it any less of a, of a good radio. It, it deserves all the accolades it gets, but we're going to see the news come out on the 710 uh, likely being a stronger receiver. The, you know, the Sherwood report is, is going to say, yep, Yesu is a, is a better receiver than the 7300. Why? Well, it's, it's five years newer, of, of course, right? So the question is really, you know, one, uh, do you like the way Yesu does stuff on, on radios? And if you do, you'll probably like this. If it were me right now and you had money burning in your a hole in your pocket, I would say FTDX10. If we're talking holiday time frame where the price of the FTDX10 may will certainly not be sale prices, so it'll be back up to like 1400 um, and you're looking for a around $1,000, $1,100, $1,200 $1, then the 710 is probably going to be there with a coupon for the holiday season. So it, it really is, it's too hard. Anybody who, anybody who so easily like says this one is the clear winner, it's, they're answering that for them. They're answering that question for themselves. If you don't think the same way they do or enjoy the same things the way they do, then, then you may not feel the same way they do, right? So for me to say like, oh yeah, this is clearly a winner of a 7300, they're very they're they're very similar to me to be honest. Um, I do like the pack-in speaker. I, I will say that again. I think it's it's really nice that that Yesu is doing that, and I think that uh, that's probably going to be something that we'll see more of in the future. I hope, particularly on these entry-level beginner radios where they include things like that. I think that's a nice buy. You know, I I think that's a cool perk, right? That that not a lot of people do, and and fun things like that. I think are are worth it. So. Yeah, I don't know. I hope I answered the question. I, I dodged it a little bit, but the answer is, it's like, yeah, I mean, it, it's the new radio in town. It's based off of a lineage of of two of the, the highest performing receivers that are on the market with the FT-101D and the FTDX x 10 So am I going to be surprised when this shows up as like number three or something like that? No, not at all. Um, so really, it's just going to come down to what your preference is. Yep, that's my thoughts. And who knows, maybe there's going to be new radios down the line here and you know, you'll maybe not, you know, want the, the, the Yezu you just bought anymore. You'll want the next new hotness, which is what always happens, right? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Built-in Yezu speakers are poor quality. Look at the size of them. Of, eh. I, I mean, I don't know. I, it sounds good. It sounds good. It, it it sounded good both on the stock speaker and the AESS speaker. So I'm, I'm not. I don't know. I I feel like you're sometimes our our expectations are like way high for for like entry level radio, right? So, yeah. I don't know. That's those are my thoughts. Uh, yeah. I have this set to really fast too. So let's let's dial that back down. Yeah. It's it's. There we go. Fast one is like stock is that the new external yeah that's the that's the one that, they it comes with the speaker yeah same price this week i nick i've been saying that all live stream <laughs> they're the same price uh yeah i, I covered it already but um it, it, dsp is the same thing as dnr in this case let me let me get out of um We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this because I, I think this is a feature that, that people do care about. So let's get a good angle on it. We'll dive in a little bit. Get it out of Riddy.
Where'd all my signals go? Oh, I've got the... Expand. There we go. Okay, this is DNR on. DNR off. And if I hold down DNR, hold down DNR, that brings up the control, and then you function knob to adjust. If you get it up to six, it sounds like you're underwater. That's too underwater for me. Oh, there's a hot... Somebody's making a hot claim. Elmer time. Elmer time is saying that they're going to... This radio will be number 12 on the Sherwood engineering list. Okay. We'll see how that goes. I wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the the answer is on that. It'll be happening soon. Andre Robotai. Robotali. Robotali. Yeah, Robotali. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Boy, howdy, 66. Yes, it is. The HRCC net is on 40 every Friday. And uh, we also do Thursday for the digital voice net, which is D-Star, DMR, and Yacy System Fusion. What? Sherwood's retiring? So he can't do lists anymore? Interesting. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, I don't I don't know what the feature is called. Does it have the audio filter that removes people tuning? Yeah, that's the notch filter. So yeah, most radios have notch filters. Yeah. All right. I think we answered a lot of the questions. I got a little bit of time, and uh, I'll wrap things up here. Turn this down. Turn that down for anybody that may be trying to troll right now. I think we'll we'll wrap things up and go to the Discord. So if you want to have some questions, I'm only going to be hanging out to talk about the 710. If you want to, I, I'm not. Uh, you can save all your amateur radio questions for tomorrow. We're going to be doing a live stream with Ward Silver on uh, ham radio for dummies and shack grounding and bonding. So I'm really looking forward to that. So please consider joining us or following us to the live stream tomorrow. But in the meantime, if you want to get ready. We have a Discord, and that Discord will be taking live questions for Ward tomorrow. So consider joining us uh, down in the Discord. You can join right now. Join us in the after chat. Just go down to live-stream, and you'll be able to see all the fun that's going on for both audio and text. So we'll be answering some questions. Why did it get so dark? What's going on here? Enhance. Enhance. Here we go. All right. Guys, that's going to do it for me. Maybe I just need to. There we go. That's good stuff right there. All right, I'll play you out with some memes. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. 73.